what are the different characteristics of developing economies so within developing economies also there is lot of diversity lot of diversity between the different developing economies right but there are few characteristics which are common among among these countries one mostly these countries they have lower levels of living and productivity so you can take up uh, us on one side and india and congo on the other side so india and congo are developing countries and us is the the developed countries and you will find that there is a lot of productivity difference lot of living a lot of uh, uh, income difference between these countries mostly these low and middle income countries they are uh, they they are hugely populated and uh, in 2005 84% of the world's population they are living in these middle and low income countries and how much of the income which is being generated is coming through these or it is going to these low lower and middle income countries that is around 46% so can you see the diversity can you see the difference that how much of income is going to the 84% of the population and such a huge amount of income is going to just 16% of the population of developed countries other thing is that at very low levels of income there is something which is the vicious cycle of poverty will come up so when i say vicious cycle i mean they already have low income yes if they have low income they will not have much amount to be invested in education much amount to be invested in in health right in case if they are not investing in education and health naturally their productivity is going to be lower also if they are going if their productivity is going to be lower they will not be uh having much growth so there will be economic stagnation so when i say investment that investment could be investment in human capital uh, which is education and health or it could be investment in plant and machinery also right whichever bit but it's not that all developing countries at all times they always remained at the low levels of income so there were countries like south korea there were countries like taiwan which were once among the poorest in the world but they came out of this lower level of poverty or they came out of this lower level of equilibrium so uh, on the one hand you have east asia in which there is lot of growth on the one hand you have east asia in which there is lot of growth on the other hand you have sub saharan africa in which there is hardly any growth right and then you have other parts of asia and africa in which there is a there is intermediate growth right so even within developing countries there are lot of differences so there are regions who grew very fast there are regions who do not have much growth and there are regions who are having intermediate growth. then you have lower levels of human capital so by human capital you mean in is the population healthy is the population educated is the population having skills right so in developing worlds um, you will find this that uh, enrollments have increased people are enrolling a lot in schools but uh, are they really attending it or are they completing schools that is questionable right and not only that even if they are completing it so are they getting uh, the basic skills of writing of reading of basic mathematical ability are they achieving those basic skills now that is questionable that is questionable what is also seen now if you look at it from the education point of view then under 5 mortality rates they are going to increase as mothers education levels are uh, going to increase now when i say increase i mean uh, it is going to improve uh, so don't consider it like in increase in under 5 mortality rate it means improve so right somewhere it is improve improve se matlab hai that is declining as mothers education levels are going to increase 
right so if mothers are educated then they know how to take care of their children they know when children have to be vaccinated right so they know uh, the importance of uh, importance of vaccination importance of uh, breastfeeding the child and importance of keeping child healthy right so all of these simple things uh with mothers education uh, it, this will be helpful for improving the health condition in the in the population now if you look at uh, uh, health conditions uh, in east asia health conditions in east asia are relatively better right in sub saharan africa there are problems like malaria malnutrition tb aids parasitic infections so this point is telling you that how uh, within developing countries also there is a lot of difference so one part of the developing world is improved other part is not improved in terms of education <clears throat> you look at southeast asia or south asia you will find it that still you have a lot of liter illiteracy there uh, low school attainment low low and and undernourishment so again there is one part of developing world which is not literate enough even if they are literate enough they do not have basic attainments in education that is doing basic mathematics basic reading writing nothing and they are undernourished also so these points are telling you what these points are pointing towards that developing world is not is not homogeneous it is heterogeneous so it's not that all countries will have the same characteristic even within developing countries there are a lot of differences so in case the question comes you will have to answer all of this in low income countries the primary school completion is increasing so you have uh, uh, enrollments in india in 1990s in primary school they were 68% in 2005 it increased to 89% so this shows what this shows us that the primary school completion they are also increasing and the enrollments are also increasing that's a good thing so this is one data point which you can give for uh, for for proving your point right then you have high levels of inequality and absolute poverty right high levels of inequality and absolute poverty uh, you also have to talk about the inequality differences between uh, even among developing countries uh, you look at latin american countries you will find that there is lot of high inequality there is lot of inequality in 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 various middle income countries such as latin latin uh, american countries you will find it that inequality is very high uh, they have given the example of sierra leone lesotho south africa they have the highest inequality in the world right uh, inequality is also high among resource rich countries of middle east and sub saharan africa so there are countries uh, uh, of sub saharan africa of middle east also in which you might you might thought that okay fine there may be less inequality because Uh, everyone's income is high that's not true everyone's income is not high even these are resource rich countries there is a lot of a uh, lot of inequality even in even in these resource rich countries right inequality varies among developing countries which is generally with generally lower inequality in asia so you have moderately high inequality in latin america high inequality even in resource rich countries of middle middle east and uh, this guy uh, sub saharan africa but in uh, in in countries of asia you'll find that relatively lower inequality and then authors they talk about uh, uh, poverty so there is large majority of extremely poor people they are living in the low income developing countries so what are the low income developing countries these are these are uh, uh, sub saharan africa right south asia so most of the extremely poor people now when i say extremely poor uh, even developing uh, your uh, world bank also say I mean, people who are living at less than 1 dollar you can say and why do you think extreme poverty is going to work extreme poverty is going to occur because people do not have 
better education so it means they do not have skills if they do not have skills it means that they can't earn more one that is low human capital that is one thing extreme poverty is also going to come due to social exclusion discrimination on the basis of caste on the basis of race on the basis of sex all of that also can lead to extreme poverty there is political exclusion also maybe some groups do not have enough voting rights no. and the other deprivation so all of these can culminate into extreme poverty right and uh, to Darrow and Smith, they talk about, they, they say this, that if you look at the magnitude and the extent of the poverty, they depend upon two things. One, it depends upon the average level of national income and the distribution of income which uh, measures inequality. So you'll have to look at what is on an average people are earning in that country. So from there, you get some idea, okay, whether the country is rich or poor and the distribution of that income. So whatever income they're earning, how is that distributed? Is that distributed equally? Or there is a lot of inequality in that distribution, right? So when you talk about absolute poverty, they say this, it is the minimum level of income which you require just to have basic clothing, shelter, uh, food. If you do not even have this much, it means that uh, persons are absolutely poor. For, for food, clothing, and shelter. Then this is absolute poverty. And World Bank has estimated this uh, that you know, people, percentage of people who are living on less than $1 a day. In East Asia and Pacific, 9.1%. Latin America, 8.6%. Middle East, 1.5%. And just look at these two numbers. South Asia, 31.7%. And Sub-Saharan Africa, 41.1%. Huge population of these regions are living at less than $1 a day, right? And uh, share of world population living in extreme poverty has decreased to 15% uh, by 2006. Uh, if I'd have decreased uh, from, from that point now. So these are the three main characteristics. I'll take up the more characteristics in the coming videos. So I hope it was useful to you. Please make notes and read reading also. Thank you, Vitnam.